think about Mr. Washington. Young man, yes, sir. What do you want to do with your life? I want to buy my mother home, sir. I want to take care of my mother. I want to make my mother proud. How can you say you want to make your brother proud and you were in the dean's office the other day for fighting? Sir, they call me DT, the dumb twin. How do I get even, sir? Tell me. They pick on me all the time. I'm not like my brother. They always compare me to him. Mr. Brown, you want to get even? Yes, sir. Remember these words by Frank Sinatra. The best revenge is massive success. Become massively successful. That's how you become even. Mr. Brown, why did you sign those papers? I fought for you. I saw something in you. You've got greatness in you. I know you're not as fast as your brother. But there's a hunger in you, sir. When I saw your name, I couldn't believe it. Why did you do that? Several teachers met with me and said that you wouldn't be with me at Florida and University to help me. I would not make it at Florida and M. You've been like a father to me. I never would want to bring embarrassment to your day. He said, I don't care what they said. But did you believe that you could go there and graduate? No, sir. Not without you, sir. Listen to me. Yes, sir. Sometimes you have to believe in somebody's belief in you until your belief kicks in. Let us say together, it's possible. I can live my dreams. I will work on myself. I will retrain my thinking every day. I would read 10 to 15 pages of something positive every day. I will turn off my television and turn on my life. Let us say together, it's necessary to detoxify your life. Look at the people in your life and ask the question, what is this relationship doing to me? There are some people you need to let go. Let us say together, let go or be dragged. They're emotional vampires. They will drain you. Bless, can I change them? No, it's a full-time job changing yourself. There's some people that so negative, they can walk into a dark room and begin to develop. You're talking about earning more money. You got to be serious. People say money won't make you happy, but everybody want to find out for themselves. Here's something else. Write this down. You're going to fail your way to success. There are people who, who should be there to encourage you. They're going to be the number one members of the discouragement club. When you have a dream, think it not strange that you'll face the fiery furnaces of this world. You will have tribulations. And don't complain. Don't go around telling everybody. 80% don't care. 20% glad is you. Suck it up. And make it happen. Everybody let us say together, leap and grow your wings on the way down. Believe it or not, every successful person has jumped. You cannot just exist in this life. You have got to try to live. But to get to that life, you're going to have to jump. See, God, when he created all of us, he gave every last one of us a gift at birth. You just got to quit looking at gifts as running, jumping, singing, and dancing. When you're standing on the cliff of life and you see people soaring by, you hear about them doing wonderful things. Maybe you look up the street and your neighbor just gets a car every year, every two years. Have you ever thought, maybe this person right here has identified their gift and is living in their gift. But the only way for you to soar is you got to jump. You got to take that gift that's packed away on your back. That gift opens up and provides the soil. If you don't ever use it, you're gonna just go to work. That ain't living, man. You just existed. But the only way to see what living like, you gotta jump. Let me just be real with you. When you first jump, your parachute will not open right away. 
you're going to hit them rocks. You're going to get some cuts on you. You're going to be bleeding pretty bad. But eventually, the parachute has to open. That is a promise of God. He, it has to open, man. You can play it safe. And you can stand on that cliff of life forever safe. I got another promise I can make you. You never know what God really has. If I were you, I would jump. You got to jump, man. You got to take a chance. God hold you up, man. He ain't going to let you fall. Do yourself a favor, man. Before you leave this world, jump. Just jump one time. You got to be willing to risk people talking about you. You got to be willing to fail again and again. We live in a world where we're told more about our limitations rather than our potential, and so most people just can't see themselves doing better. People go to jobs that they hate, 87% of Americans, and guess what? And they pray they don't get fired. No, I ain't going out like this. And people think you're crazy, and you are. You got to have another mind in you that says, I got this. This is my life. Nobody's going to tell me how much I'm worth, what time I can take a lunch break. No! No, I got this. Mr. Washington said, Mr. Brown, transform your mindset. Number two, he said, practice only quality people. You want only quality people. Here's something else he said, Mr. Brown, yes, sir. Develop your communication skills. He said, once you open your mouth, you tell the world who you are. And then he said something else. He said, you got to be hungry. I said, what do you mean by that? He said, people that are hungry are relentless. People that are hungry are unstoppable. People that are hungry, no excuse is acceptable for not making their dream become a reality. Hungry, sir, for another life. I'm not going to die here in Liberty City. I want to travel, sir. He said, Practice only quality people. If you run around with nine broke people, he said, I guarantee you, you'll become number 10. Listen to these audio programs I'm giving you every day. Dr. Norman Vincent Peale, Jim Rohn, every day. Program your mind, Mr. Brown. Are you willing to do that, to be successful, to buy your mother home? Yes, sir. You've got some goals that you want to achieve. And you've said to yourself, I'm willing to face the nose. You said to yourself, I'm willing for people to laugh at me. You said to yourself, I'm willing to make this happen. I can do it. If anybody's ever done it at any point in time in history, then what's possible for one, it's possible for me. And I'm going to do it. He said, you got to expect to become successful. Let us say together, I expect to win. I expect to become a millionaire. It's my time. It's hard. It's worth it your homework assignment and write down five reasons that will make it worth it for you. So when the tough times come, when you feel like you can't see the light at the end of the tunnel, your reasons will be your rod and staff to comfort you. Mr. Shelf put it to me this way. He said, Jim, if you had enough reasons, you could do the most incredible things. See, reasons will change your whole life. You've got enough intelligence but not enough reasons. Here's what else I found out. Reasons come first, answers come second. Some people do well for respect. Some people do well for the way it makes them feel. They love the feeling of being a winner. Next is family reasons. Some people do extremely well for other people. That might be one of the most stimulating reasons to do well. Good question tonight. What's got you bombed out of sight to get up early and stay up late and hit it all day? I've fallen out of the sky a few times, but I've never lost that drive to make something unique out of my life. See, reasons altered my whole life. And that is, everyone here is in business and there's a problem that all businesses have. We're in the most competitive environment we've ever been in. We went from, what, 500 million people being online 
to a couple billion people being online, and in the next four years, they're saying we're gonna have three billion more online. That means this entire world is a bigger market. If you're the person that adds more value, it also means you're gonna have more competitors than you've ever seen in your life. How many think the economic world that we're in today is gonna stay the way it is? Raise your hand. Okay, one man on drugs, there's always one. How many think that the economic environment's gonna go through seasons? We're gonna have some more ups and downs as we adjust to what's happening in the world here. Say, I. Well, then if we know that, our goal, you and I as leaders, should be to anticipate that. In fact, everyone in this room is a leader of something, whether you're the leader of the company or whether you're a leader of the department, or whether you're a parent or hopefully you're a leader or not a follower. If you're a leader, you've got to exercise that skill. And so I want to talk to you about that and one of the most important skills of that. But most people don't exercise that leadership because they're dropping behind in their skill sets. And I'll give you an example of what I mean. How many of you in this room, I want an honest answer. I'd like you to yell the answer, raise your hand if you would, please. How many of you in this room have ever experienced the absolute total humiliation of playing a video game against the child? What happens when you play the child? Who always wins? Come on, who wins? Always, why? Is it because they're faster? Is it they're smarter, they're younger, their neurons are functioning at a quicker tempo? Here's how it usually works. You're a mother or father, you're an uncle or an aunt, your grandfather or grandmother, you're a friend of the family, you're looking for a gift, we live in a tech world, in a world where today children play with an iPad and learn how to use it before they know how to tie their shoes. How different is that world? I was with Mark yesterday with his daughter for her six year birth, six, six year old birthday, and we're talking about things, and she's got these Legos, and a friend of ours says, oh, my six year old goes, like, goes on the iPad, searches on YouTube for videos on how to build cool stuff using Legos, and starts to study how to build all these structures. That's the world we're in that our kids are in at six years old. And imagine what else they're searching for and finding at six years old. It's a wild, wild world. So here we are with this technology and most of us are not seeing what it's doing for us. So you sit down with this child who's high tech, you're not. Even the techies in this room aren't usually as gamers. I know there are plenty of gamers in the room, but there's plenty of not. And then what does the child do? The child says, oh, come on. Go look, I'm not good at this. This is for you. Come on, uncle. Come on, auntie. Come on, mom. Come on, dad. It's my birthday. It's Christmas. These are the guilt approach, don't they? And what do you find? You finally break down. Okay. Now you should know you're being set up when they go, you go first, right? And they go, look, it's really simple. You just shoot these guys and it all drops down. And you think, okay, I'm going to show this little bastard. I can do a thing or two here, right? Take out the gun and you're dead in 2.3 seconds. Who's experienced Say, I. Now what happens to the child? About 45 minutes later, you get your second turn. Am I right? And then you're now you're really pissed. You're dedicated. You're devoted. You're focused. You're going to take this thing out. You last four seconds and you're dead. Out of the side of the head. The kid, 45 minutes again. Who's had this experience? Say, I. Why does the child always win? Is it because they're faster? Is it because they're smarter? Is it because they're stronger? No, it's because they played this game before. As a result, they have the secret to success. They know the road ahead. And if you know the road ahead, you have an incredible power called anticipation. Anticipation is the ultimate advantage. See, winners, leaders anticipate, losers react. The reason you get beat is you don't know where things are happening, so you're reacting. Reaction is always stressful. And yet so much of our life is predictable if we just were to study it, not be caught up in our day to day. It's predictable the challenges you're gonna have in your relationships or with your kids or with your body or with your job or with your economics or with your mother-in-law or father-in-law. These are predictable. And if you were to anticipate these things and put a strategy in place, you could take it all out and have the quality of life that you deserve. In business, it's everything. Success is predictable and success is, is predictable because life is designed for your success. But failure is also predictable because failure is the same result as success. Let me explain what I mean. God designed everything he created to be successful. You will never see a bird who cannot fly naturally. You'll never see a fish who cannot swim naturally. Every seed, if you put it in the ground and give it water, you don't need to pray. It is designed to bring forth a tree. Everything God created has built into it its own success. And if the plant is here today, and gone tomorrow, how much more important are you to God? The average human being does not know why they're on planet Earth. They wake up every morning, go into a job they hate, working with people they don't like, getting paid less than they're worth, and dying too young from frustration because they don't know why they exist. Without a purpose, life has no meaning. It has no sense of destiny, no sense of precision. The average human on Earth have no idea about their ability. 90% of the human population will die and never achieve more than 10% of their true ability. This is the frustration of all humans. Every human wants to be successful. I have never met any human who said, I plan to fail tomorrow. 
No human wants to fail. Am I right? Everybody wants to succeed. But I have some good news for you. Write this down. Success is to predict what is my destination. Everyone wants to know what is my future? Where am I going in the next 20 years, 40 years? What will I be when I am 75 or 82? What is my destiny? The greatest tragedy in life is life without a purpose. Nothing is worse than being alive and not knowing why. Breathing oxygen and eating food and getting energy and don't know why you have it. To live for 80 years and still didn't know why you were here. That's a tragedy. Your success is important to God. God needs you to succeed. When I discovered this, I became very bold. I discovered this when I was 17 years old. I discovered that God needed me to succeed because success is built in to creation by every manufacturer. Success is important to every manufacturer who makes a product. So the success of the product is necessary to protect the reputation of the company. So the worst thing that can happen to a manufacturer is when his product fails. His entire reputation and company can be destroyed. So success is necessary for the manufacturer. You are a product and the first thing the manufacturer placed on you is his image. The manufacturer says, let us make a product in our image. And so taught me that the mind is like a factory, a mental factory. And whatever you think about all day long pours ingredients into this mental factory. And that's what builds the economic, social, financial fabric of your life. He quoted me a Bible phrase that said, as you think, so you become. How awesome. When he talked about poor thinking habits, he had me. I used to start the day reading the morning newspaper. I mean, you can believe that or not. I'd get a cup of coffee and read the paper. I'd load up on wars and riots and murders and stabbings and killings and bank robberies and muggings and car wrecks and tragedies. I'd even read the back pages. I seem to like that stuff for some weird reason. I'd load up on all that and then I'd start the day. You can imagine the kind of days I used to have. The guy says, I want to be a great leader. Wonderful. The first thing we do is follow him to his house. When we get there, we walk in and check his library, number one. Somebody says, well, why check his library? The reason is because what a man reads pours massive ingredients into his mental factory. And the fabric of his life is built from those ingredients. You would not believe what some people have got in their house to read. You would not believe. One of the best dressed up words I know for a lot of it is trash. Can you imagine dumping a barrel of trash into this mental factory every day and coming out with a rich, dynamic, positive life? It can't be done. You might as well try making a cake with cement. The kids back in Danbury, Connecticut, high school, they're asking me questions one day. I'm talking to the kids. Kids got good questions these days. One of them said to me, Mr. Rohn, how do you build the good life? I said, it's simple. It's not easy, but it's simple. Here's how you build anything. Select the right ingredients, keep out the wrong ingredients, and it starts with thought. Everything starts with thought. So you must be wise and careful what you think about, because that starts everything. I asked the kids, what would happen if somebody dropped sugar in my coffee? They said, will you be okay? I said, what if somebody dropped strychnine in my coffee? They said, well, you'd be dead. I said, correct. Lesson one. Life is both sugar and strychnine. You gotta be careful. I said, what if my worst enemy drops in the sugar? They said, will you be okay? I said, what if my best friend, even by accident, drops in the strychnine? They said, well, you'd be dead. I said, correct. Lesson two, watch your car. You gotta be careful. See, it doesn't matter who hands you the bad stuff. It doesn't matter where you get the bad stuff. It'll still do its damage on your bank account. Mr. Shoff gave me one of the greatest phrases when I first met him when he said, Jim, every day stand guard at the door of your mind. How important. And you decide what goes into your mental factory. Don't let anybody just dump anything they want to in your mental factory because you've got to live with the result. You try this without God, you trip it. You trip it. See, for every time you have a plan, 
an aspiration or a goal, this thing comes along called life. It happens to everybody. You're going to lose somebody you care about one day. Somebody going to close the plant you thought was going to stay open so you can retire. That's a false hope to think you're going to have a wonderfully carefree life. I'm wondering this morning if there's anybody here that life has handed you something that you didn't expect. The one thing I can tell you for sure is that nothing is for sure. Life will often disrupt what you expected. That just as soon as you have it down in a nice neat little box of how you think it's going to go, it will never be what you expected it to be. So you got to get used to being a little disappointed. You got to get used to being a little bit shocked. You got to get used to walking in the situations and being flexible and adjustable. Because if you are not flexible, you cannot survive. Sometimes we look at pieces in our lives that don't make sense. The key is what we do in our times of pain. Pain will change us. Every painful time, even though you don't like it, it's developing something in you that can only be developed in the tough times. Eventually, that will pass. You'll get through it, but you will be different in those tough times. Many of you know that, that God will make things uncomfortable to get you out of your comfort zone, to put you in a place of purpose and destiny, to rise to the height of your calling and soar above your adversities and fly like the eagle you were created to be. God never said that we would understand everything that happens along the way, but he did promise that it would all work out for our good. The key is what we do in our times of pain. If you go through a divorce, a legal battle, a friend betrays you, eventually that will pass. You'll get through it, but you will be different. Now, how the pain changes you is up to you. You can come out bitter or you can come out better. You can come out with a chip on your shoulder blaming God, or you can come out stronger with a greater confidence in God. You can come out defeated, giving up on your dreams, or you can come out with a new passion, a new fire, excited about the new opportunities in front of you. All of us experience pain. My challenge, don't just go through it, grow through it. That difficulty is an opportunity to get stronger, to develop character, to gain new confidence. Anybody can give up. Anybody can let it overwhelm you. But you know what that's doing? Wasting your pain. That pain is not there to stop you. It's there to prepare you, to increase you, to develop you. God is a merciful God. He didn't bring you this far to leave you. He didn't set you up to fail. You're tripping, man. Even if you're wrong, he forgives us. Just keep moving, man. It ain't nothing. Now look, I've had some painful moments in this like you. But hey, I look for the bright side, man. I expect something good to happen. See, whatever experience you're having right now, it has not come to stay. It has come to pass. Not to stay, just to pass. It's just going through. The biggest challenge is, is to know what's happening. This is a part of this thing we call life. This too shall pass. And maintaining perspective, putting it in perspective. See, a lot of us, because of our limited vision of ourselves, a lot of us who begin to focus on problems and enable them to overwhelm us, we begin to think that we have no options. We begin to believe that there's no way out. You can decide that you're going to stand up to life. And all of these things that are happening to me right now, they're just temporary inconveniences. You're going to go through things that are not fair. It's easy to live discouraged, but if you'll just stay in faith and keep moving forward in time, God will make all things beautiful. Nothing beautiful about going through a loss or dealing with an illness. Just give it some time. You don't have to live worried. God is working behind the scenes. What you thought was going to limit you the rest of your life, the bad break, the mistake you made, 
That is not how your story ends. Beauty is coming. It's going to turn out better than you've imagined. God will make all things beautiful. Not just the good breaks, not just the promotions. That's obvious. But he'll make the disappointments, the mistakes. That's how awesome our God is. Don't give up on your dreams. Bitter over the person that walked away or upset over the contract that should have been yours. Let it go. God saw what happened. He said he would pay you back double for the wrongs. He just needs some time. Now, while you're waiting, stay in faith. When is it ever going to turn around? This is not fair. Pass the test. Keep going to work with a good attitude. At the right time, you're going to see him show out in your life in such a way that you don't think about what you've lost. You're so fulfilled, you don't dwell on the negative things in your past. You keep honoring God, and he's going to make up for what you didn't get. He's going to have the right people come to you to push you into your purpose. He knows who left you out. He knows the times you didn't think you could go on. He's going to do something awesome in your life. Perhaps you went through a breakup. You're hurting. You're lonely. God is not finished. He's not going to leave you depressed. He has someone amazing coming where you're going to be happier and more fulfilled than you've ever been. Don't judge the rest of your life by one difficult season. Thoughts will tell you, it's never going to change. Just accept it. Don't believe those lies. God promised he will make all things beautiful. Now here's the key, just give it some time. The mistake we make often is we get in a hurry. Voices whisper, if it was going to happen, come on man, it would have happened by now. Trust the process. All things in its time will be beautiful. If it hasn't happened yet, then it hasn't been the right time. When it's your time to see beauty, promotion, vindication, it will happen. How we wait is important. If we wait upset, God, why did these people do me wrong? That's going to delay the beauty. The right way to wait is in an attitude of faith, knowing that he's working all things for your good, expecting his favor. This difficulty didn't come to stay, it came to pass. God being for me is more than the world being against me. God knows how to make all things beautiful if you'll just give him the time. You don't understand, it wasn't fair, just keep moving forward. God is not going to waste anything you went through. You're about to come out to new levels, see favor that you've never seen. Quit believing those lies that you've had too many bad breaks. You have a good reason to live sour. Look at what you've been through. That was all setting you up for something you've never imagined. Things that were meant to harm you. Struggles that have tried to discourage you. Bad breaks that should have limited your life. This is a new day. You're about to see vindication, new opportunities. The tide is turning in your favor. What was meant for your harm, God is turning to your advantage. That there's a time for weeping, a time for loss, but that is not the end of the story. God also said he will make all things beautiful in its time. There's a time for restoration, a time for deliverance, a time for celebration. Give God the time, he'll make all things beautiful. And here's what I want to say to you. For those of you that have experienced some hardships, don't give up on your dream. Hi, welcome back to Mind Control. How much of life do you feel like you control? Or how much does life control you? Do you tend to control more of what's going on or events controlling you? If you focus on what you can't control, if you focus on the past, if you focus on what's missing from your life constantly, that pattern of focus will make you frustrated, overwhelmed, depressed. It won't even matter if you're, you know, taking antidepressants. If you keep focusing on what you can't control, what's missing from your life, you're going to feel depressed still. You can take as many antidepressants as you want. 
focus equals power. The challenge of life I have found is to build a resume that doesn't simply tell a story about what you want to be, but it's a story about who you want to be. It's a resume that doesn't just tell a story about what you want to accomplish, but why. A story that's not just a collection of titles and, and positions, but a story that's really about your purpose. Because when you inevitably stumble and find yourself stuck in a hole, that is the story that will get you out. What is your true calling? What is your dharma? What is your purpose? You can't connect the dots looking forward. You can only connect them looking backwards. So you have to trust that the dots will somehow connect in your future. You have to trust in something, your gut, destiny, life, karma, whatever. Because believing that the dots will connect down the road will give you the confidence to follow your heart even when it leads you off the well-worn path. And that will make all the difference. Just stand. You keep standing. You keep standing, no matter how rough the sea, you keep standing. And I'm not talking about just water. You keep standing. No matter what, you don't give up. It doesn't matter to me any longer how long I live. What matters to me most is how I live. I ask y'all one question. A question that I was asked all my life by a third grade dropout. How you living? How you living? Every day, ask yourself that question, how you living? Here's, here's what a cook in the dining center would suggest you to live this way. That you would not judge, that you would show up early, that you'd be kind, that you'd make sure that that servant's town is huge and used. That if you're going to do something, you do it the right way. That, that, that cook would tell you this that it's never wrong to do the right thing. That how you do anything is how you do everything. And in that way, you will grow your influence to make an impact. In that way, you will honor all those who have gone before you, who have invested in you. Look in those unlikeliest places for wisdom. Enhance your life every day by seeking that wisdom and asking yourself every night, how am I living? I don't know how much stayed in, but he ate them, right? <laughs> But the point being, anything can be done if you break it down small enough. Make sense? So don't let the bigness of a goal overwhelm you. Complaining, crying, whining, griping, a Bible word called murmuring. See, that'll ace your future. Spend five minutes complaining and you have wasted five. And you may have begun what's known as economic cancer of the bone. Surely they will soon haul you off into a financial desert and there let you choke on the dust of your own regret. And not only is it important for you to know it's possible for you to choose your future, but it's necessary that you work on yourself, that you develop yourself. It's necessary that you get the energy drainers out of your life, people who don't want anything, people who are not striving, people who are not challenging themselves, people who aren't growing, people who have stopped dreaming. It's necessary that you align yourself with people and attract people into your business who are hungry, people who are unstoppable and unreasonable, people who are refusing to leave life just as it is and who want more. My mother used to say, birds of a feather flock together. If you run around with losers, you will end up a loser. It's necessary that you get the losers out of your life if you want to live your dream. One person can change the world by giving people hope. So if you want to change the world, start each day with a task completed. Find someone to help you through life. Respect everyone. Know that life is not fair and that you will fail often. But if you take some risks, Step up when the times are the toughest. Face down the bullies, lift up the downtrodden, and never, ever give up. If you do these things, the next generation and the generations that follow will live in a world far better than the one we have today. And what started here will indeed have changed the world for the better. Let's look at this idea of specificity for a minute. Like a winter home in Hawaii, very nice. But if I say, 
I will own a two-bedroom beachfront fill on the west coast of Maui, Hawaii by June 1st, 2003. Does that sound a little more clear? Yeah. And until you get specific like that, the creative part of your brain won't jump in and decide how to help you get there. And that's why a lot of people never get their dreams, because they don't make them specific enough. You got to get real nitty gritty. Break it down. How much by when? I want a better relationship with my husband. Well, what does that mean? But if I say I want to spend an hour a week sitting opposite my husband talking about real things that matter, no TV on, eye to eye communication. Now that we can measure. Did you do it for an hour? Want to have more fun. What does that mean? Well, what if I say I'm going to listen to comedy albums twice a week for a minimum of an hour? You're probably going to have more fun. So make it specific. Make it, make it real. Some people say, you know, I want our business to increase. Well, how much? By when? I want the reading scores to go up in a school. How much? By when? Until you have that, you're not going to make progress. And so many people's dreams never get completed because they're not clear about the specific number of how much by when. I told you earlier in the program, we said we're going to sell a million and a half books in a year and a half. And that directed our behavior. Recently, we just said we're going to sell a million books in one day. We had 101 bookstores involved in a book signing. We're going to try to be in the Guinness Book of World Record for the largest book signing ever done. Now, I don't think we sold a million books. Maybe we sold a couple hundred thousand. But by holding that question and trying to figure out how to do it, it moved us toward that goal. Now, maybe it'll take us two years to figure out how to sell a million books in one day. But it gets the thinking to expand out into that arena. Is this making sense? Okay, so you want to have those goals. Now, the other thing you want to do is break your goals down. Many of you have big goals. End hunger in the world. That's a pretty big goal. You know, have world peace. Achieve a certain level of spiritual oneness with God or life. Big goals. When you first look at it, it's kind of overwhelming. But what if we were to break that down into little steps? It says, okay, I want to go to college and get a PhD. Gosh, I'm only a high school student. But the next step would be finish the math class, get an A in this. Write for a brochure from a college. Get a catalog. Pick one or five colleges that I want to apply to. You know, just keep breaking it down to little steps and then figure out how to get all those steps done and put a date by each step and then start doing the plan. Someone said if you fail to plan, you're planning to fail. Does that make sense? Yeah, absolutely. Some one of my friends said success by the yard is hard, by the inch it's a cinch. So we just break it down into small pieces. I had, uh, I was reading the Guinness Book of World Records because we were thinking about being in there and this guy set a goal to eat an entire bicycle, tires and all. Now, how do you do that, right? Well, it took him 17 days. But what he did is he kept cutting the bicycle up and then melting it down into little swallowable pieces, and he ate them. It's really hard to be truly happy when you're not being yourself. And most of us have no clue who we are. We all have situations that don't look like they're going to work out. We don't see how we can get well, how we can accomplish a dream, how our family will be restored. All the circumstances say it's not going to happen. Thank you so much for watching till the end. Don't forget to share your thoughts in the comments section. Please also like, subscribe, and share this video with your friends and families. Please watch our other motivational videos. Thank you again. Hi, welcome back to Mind Control. Right now, are you in fear? Every moment of your life, you're in fear. No. You will overcome that fear. But the hard part is, you got to take that first step. I am deeply motivated by fear. The fear, by the way, is not a conspiracy. That shit is real. Everybody like, oh, fear ain't real. Yeah, well, uh-huh, it's easy for you to say you ain't got any this second. You face your fears, you become the person you want to be. To create fear, you have to use excessive imagination. There's a lot of fear, um, but I understand what the emotion of fear is. It's a subconscious trigger that causes this feeling that I don't like. And it's a ghost signal for me, not a stop signal for me. Everybody doesn't win. And the sooner you wake up to that, that biology is ruthless, man, then you get a little fear in you. And when you get a little fear in you, you start listening. Because if you're truly afraid, you listen. Let a little fear come in and drive you and motivate you. 
My first time I talked, I literally went up and blanked out. If you're afraid of pull-ups, do pull-ups. If you're in squats, do squats. If you're afraid of public speaking, go speak in public. Face your fear. It's hard. It's an uphill battle, but I know you can do it. Whatever it is that you want to do right now in your life, but you've been sitting on the fence waiting, doubting yourself because you are letting fear control you, just do it. You ain't going to be nowhere until you start taking the first step. Fear is always going to be there. Give yourself the power, and the more you face your fears, the more powerful you become. Champions are made in these moments. What are you afraid of? What's holding you back? What's putting you in a position that you feel that you can't go on? Do you have this mindset of thinking that because fear is in your way that you're supposed to stop moving? Do you believe that fear has more power than you do? Well, let me remind you something about fear. We all have to experience it. You can't run from it, but you can definitely overcome it. If someone tells you that they're not afraid of anything, make no mistake. As long as you are a human being, we are all afraid of something. But that doesn't necessarily mean that it's over. That doesn't mean that you have to give in to fear. In fact, fear helps you to build character. It brings something else out of you. Just like an animal, just like something that's trying to run away because it's afraid to die or afraid to get itself in a position that it can't get out of. It will fight to the end. So sometimes fear does do a good thing for you because something else comes out of you. It doesn't mean that you are afraid to a point that you're weak, but it ignites something else about survival, about living, about pushing, about thriving. When you go into a room and you're getting ready to take your test or whatever you may be doing in your lifetime or something that you have never done before in your life and now you are up against a challenge and you are afraid to face that challenge, don't be ashamed of that fear. But you don't let fear control you. You don't let fear dictate your life. In fact, you tell fear, take a break. I got business to take care of. And then when fear decides to show up again, then you tell it to do something else. But you do not let fear tell you what to do. Let it do what it needs to do, but you do what you have to do. Do not let these things that surround you put you in a position that you feel you can't carry on. Don't be afraid to fail. You, have, you may have often heard this from many people from time to time. Failing. I don't like to fail. I never fail. Yes, you do. We all fail at something. And you shouldn't be afraid of it. Many people will tell you that's how you learn. That's how you grow. That's how you build. There's nothing in this world that is perfect. Everything that exists has some kind of a flaw in it. And whether you're worried about what people think of you because you fail at something or because you're afraid of what people are going to think about you because you're not good at something, make no mistake that these people that are putting you in a position to think less of yourself, they may have the same circumstances going on in their life with something that you're better at and they're not. That's what makes us unique. So don't let fear control your life. Overcome the fear. Overcome it and understand it that all you got to do is just keep moving. Nothing behind you is going to help you. Everything in front of you is where you need to be. The thing about success that is limitless. And when you feel that you have reached a level, go a little bit further. When you allow fear to say that you're not worthy or you're not capable of doing something, then you have already given up because you're afraid. There are many different shapes and sizes when it comes to fear. People are afraid of everything that's out here. In certain areas, forms, and fashion, we all fear something. 
I fear it, you fear it. We all fear something, but that doesn't make you a bad person. That doesn't mean that you're worthy less of something. It means that you got work to do. That means you got something to work on. That means you got to work on overcoming this particular fear factor. And you need to push yourself a little bit harder in understanding that you can do it. Don't let fear control your life. Don't let fear tell you what to do. Don't let fear put you in a position that you feel that, hey, I'm done, and you just throw your hands up and you want to quit. Let fear do what it needs to do, and you just do what you got to do. Thank you so much for watching till the end. Don't forget to share your thoughts in the comments section. Please also like, subscribe, and share this video with your friends and families. Please watch our other motivational videos. Thank you again.